Mancandy is a generic posing and animation character for Blender. Uh, created him slightly before Project Orange started and modified him a few times since then. The current version is Mancandy 2.0 compatible with 2.44 and 2.45 Blender. There's a lot of control objects hanging around in his library file. There's the armature, and underneath the armature, there are still more objects used to automate the rigging and motion of the character. It's possible to copy this file to each file that you're going to animate in and simply animate right there, but you're carrying a lot of these files around, and besides, you'll find that. Uh, that uh, every time that I make a modification or you decide to make a modification to the character you're going to have to go and track down every animation file you did and then tweak for that modification right there and a much better solution is to use blenders groups and link man candy in as a group to your file and pose him in your scene file and leave the um, sort of library file that you downloaded intact with no animation information in it and that allows you to have new versions of man candy and more make modifications to your own so you can see how all these green wireframes here indicate that all these objects are part of a group and that's done to make linking uh, a lot easier and we'll show how to do that in a new file here so file new and let's just erase all these objects here. This is the scene file that we're going to be animating in later on. And we have to save that because I'll use relative paths. And for that to work, Blender has to know the path of both the library and the scene file. So I'll save it as tutorial1.blend. So now we'll go and link Mancandy in. So we'll go File, Append or Link or you can hit shift F1 if you want and then you browse around to where your library file is so click on the file then click on group and then select the man candy group from the file and load library or hit enter before you do it make sure you have link and relative path set otherwise you'll append man candy into the file which is definitely not what you want to do and you can use absolute path sometimes as well it just depends on how you're organizing your project relative path lets you move around entire directories from one location to another so long as you keep the relative relationships between the files the same um, that way you don't have a reference to your home folder in the project or something like that which allows you to collaborate with other people more easily so let's hit load library Now it looks like nothing happened, but really we just loaded a bunch of stuff into the file. The outliner will show us all these linked, the li icon means these are linked objects, and those are the um, the mesh shapes for the uh, bones controls of Man Candy. And here's the actual rig that is under the Man Candy group. And you can see the library path here, which can be edited by control clicking it. So you can change Mancandy to Mancandy 2.1 if you get a new version or change the relative location of the library file if it happens to change. So now we have to add a new group which can be done with Shift A or Space or just from the Add menu and there's a new Mancandy added to the scene. So basically what you have here is an empty that's a group duplicator for the man candy group. You can't actually edit the mesh or pose it, but you can move it or rotate it or scale it even, but that's not really going to help you doing character animation tasks. So we'll first clear rotation and location to make sure that he has no default transformation on him. And then we'll add a proxy. Control P and then you get this nice menu to add a proxy. Control P. The first item is Mancandy's armature candy scale. 
which I did on purpose so it will be easy to select the armature object out of a huge menu of components of the rig. So you want to create a proxy always for the posable armature, candy scale here, and it's a good idea to keep that alphabetically first in your own library files that you would make. Before we actually start using our armature, let's clean things up a little bit and make them easier. You'll notice if you deselect everything right now by hitting A, the armature disappeared. That's because it has only wire mode objects and we're in shaded or solid view mode. If you go to wireframe mode, we'll see it again. We want to make it visible all the time. We have to override the view mode and make it always display in wireframe. So we'll go into the object buttons, F7, and we'll click on wire for the draw type. And that'll fix that problem. So we can go to solid now and we can still see it. Now we can click here and make it x-ray or if we're in the object buttons we can click in the armature panel and that'll make the armature show through the mesh so it makes it easier for the animator to select bones even if they're inside the mesh. And we'll turn off these ugly dotted lines here, these relationship lines, which are useful for riggers, but not terribly useful for animators who don't really care about parent relationships. They just want to move things around. And that makes our file more poseable. We'll parent the object to the armature object by selecting man candy, then the armature, then hitting control P. And that'll make things a little bit more neat. Now, once you do that, go into pose mode on the armature and you can start posing things around. You can use the manipulators for that or you can just directly hit R, G, S, etc. and everything works. You can hide and unhide layers to make things more um, user-friendly for you to work on because each layer will display the parts of the rig that control a certain part of Man Candy's body. And so you can do some facial animation here so we can give Man Candy a, a little smile, for instance. It's all just transforming different parts of Man Candy's armature. Lots of G for grab, S for scale, so on.